As always, we will take a look at Tesla's stock price at the end of this episode. And, and of course, by the time you watch this particular episode, it could be much, much higher, lower, or maybe about the same. But the trend right now is clearly up, regardless of the direction of the market. And it is being talked about. So let's see what others think is the reason. Of course, some of these are my opinions as well. First of all, there's strong action for Tesla stock. Uh, and and the one of the suggestions is that the sector is doing well. So Lee Auto had a beat on revenue and on the bottom line yesterday. And uh, so all the BEV stocks were up yesterday, some of them 5%, 4%. So this could be a major factor in what's happening with Tesla stock right now. Number two, there's no negative headlines for a couple of days now for Tesla, other than, of course, the pie problem. And then, all right, to, now we've got a few articles today, a few headlines today about how Elon stepped in and took care of the problem, although some of those are still negative, but they're not very negative. So so many negative headlines over the past, I don't know, six or seven weeks, and then all of a sudden, nothing for a couple of days. So this has got to be a factor. Number three, I call this one the, the one that we care about the most. This would be the optimist factor. The street is now fully aware that the robots are coming. And that is going to be a that is going to be a big deal. Tesla is the only serious play available in terms of the public markets. If this third one is right, and I think it is, then we should see a sustained rally, especially as the 15 or so companies in this space keep putting up new evidence of dramatic improvements in the bots. Scott Walter says this morning, he's he, you can find him on X at Going Ballistic 5. He says the rush to build the world's first useful humanoid robots is an arms race. Number four, it can't hurt that BYD made a very public statement yesterday that Tesla and BYD only overlap in about 15% of their offerings. So they are not really competitors, but partners, this spokesperson said. Um, their, real, their real competition is ICE vehicles. Then there was VW coming out with huge concerns about how that company has to take drastic action to even stay in the game. And I mean, stay in the auto business. Stellantis made bold predictions about adding dozens of new products later this year, some with a range of capacity of 500 miles. Well, we've heard these stories before. I wonder if Stellantis will actually be able to do it. If we think about more about Stellantis' claims, we might wonder how and why a company would move to introduce so many new products in a very short period. I mean, they're talking about a couple of dozen new products over the next uh, nine months, 10 months. This raises questions about how they can get to profits with so much CapEx and initial low volume. And of course, not all of these are going to be immediate su successes. In fact, some of them will not be su successes at all. And that's going to cost them big. S um, I've seen over my personal experience in, in uh, my businesses and also watching other businesses that it's really, really hard, I would say impossible, to get your, your company, all of the players necessary to concentrate on that many different moving objects at one time. I think they'd be better off to come out with one or two products and then come out with one or two after that. This is I don't see this as a really, really good plan. The Stellantis CEO also echoed Elon Musk's clear statements and those on this channel that the critical issue is price points. You have to have the right vehicles at the right price in order to keep the sector growing. We are past the point where we can count on the early adopters paying a premium to get in early on the new category. On the other hand, what kind of breakthroughs in battery tech are is Stellantis expecting that will give them the additional energy density to get to 500 mile ranges? More questions right now than answers from Stellantis, but lots of optimism and energy about the sector. And you probably know, I think Stellantis has been a sleeping giant back there. One that looks like most of what they're talking about makes sense and their margins and their profits have been excellent lately. Number five, as noted yesterday and now echoed by others, the fact that the Wall Street Journal and others are now talking about the Cybertruck has to be part of what's helping the stock. I've had this on my list of catalysts for six months. 
earlier on, I thought just the introduction of the truck would be enough. But the fact that the mainstream media did not pick up the, the ball and run with it, I, you know, hurt that opportunity at the at the very beginning of the ramp, at the beginning of the of the launch. Now that the mainstream media is starting to get in there, uh, Wall Street Journal was one among the first, but now we have Bloomberg out this morning with a very positive review. Uh, even if the headline wasn't so good, here's the headline, Tesla Cybertruck Review. It's weird. It's brash. It's not bad. <laughs> I've hardly, he says, this is uh, the one paragraph I pulled out of it. I hardly left Hollywood when I learned the first rule of Cybertruck. If you're feeling shy, don't drive it. You'll be forced to discuss it with myriad strangers. The thing incites fervor to the point of recklessness. I waited for coffee at my local intelli intelligentsia and multiple grown men on Hollywood Boulevard ran into traffic to take a picture. I smiled and waved, then quickly pulled, pulled away. Pre-caffeine, it was better uh, for all of us if I didn't engage. So this is Randy Kirk. <laughs> If you like what we do on this channel, please hit the like button. And, and, you know, I know this is kind of the routine, but, you know, don't, don't make it a routine. Just do it. Hit the like button. Hit subscribe. Hit notify. Of course, what we have later on today is we've got Brian White in part two. If you didn't see part one yesterday, boy, you need to go back and take a look at that part. We're looking at all the competition. And yesterday, we looked at all the U.S., the Japanese, and the European makers. Today, we're going to be looking at the Chinese, the South Koreans, and the Vietnamese. To, yesterday, we looked at all the what looked like losers. <laughs> I mean, really. And today we're going to be looking at what looked like potential winners with the Vietnamese still being a question mark. But anyway, very excellent series here. These two this, these two parts covering the competition. It, I think it's important right now to start looking at what the competition is doing, not because we're worried about them, not because we're anxious that Tesla will fail because of the competition. No, that's not what's going to happen. We look at the competition to see what is happening we, so that we understand the business better and understand how Tesla will be positioning themselves in light of more and more companies coming in with actually some pretty good offerings. All right. Gary Black says, oh, let's see, I think I forgot something. Did you forget to start doing Patreon? That would be a really good thing to do. I'd really love to have a few folks. Let's let's go for 10 this week. No, that's crazy. There's only three days left. Uh, let's go for uh, three this week. One a day for three days. All right. Could we get one person today to sign up for Patreon? All right. And then, of course, you could buy some Cybertruck bottle openers. All right. Gary Black says this morning, that Tesla reported 10.8 thousand China insurance registrations for the week of February 19th to 25, following the two weeks of the Chinese New Year celebration. So this is now picking back up after Chinese New Year is over. For, for the first quarter, Tesla China is now 12.1% year over year up and negative 25.6% quarter over quarter with five weeks remaining. So in other words, December uh, December to January, down 25%, but same quarter last year, up 12.1%. So we'll see what happens over the next five weeks, but I would say this is probably right in the middle of expectations. Next week should be stronger. And uh, also you've got all the issues with regard to whether they're exporting or whether they're serving the domestic market. But we'll see, again, this will play out over time. This is not going to hurt the stock this morning. Solana CEO also predicted um, that only five major car companies will still exist in 2035, that there'll be lots of mergers and lots of acquisitions and lots of uh, folks falling away. I don't think that's true. I think there will be more than five major car companies, and there'll be a bunch of niche players but the uh, panel interviewing didn't really allow him to name names. They just talked over him. Here's what the winner's uh, circle looks like for me right now. Uh, maybe you can tell me in the comments below who you think the winners and losers are going to be over the next few months. Uh, and I've got Tesla at number one. I don't think this is even a question. I, I don't think I'll ever have to walk this one back. I think we got BYD at number two. 
I think this is clear at this point. I don't see how anybody stops them. We've got Hyundai Kia, who are already, you know, shipping about eight million, seven and a half, eight million, I think, uh, units. I think they are making all the right moves in the B uh, EV space, and so I think they will stay in that range. I think they'll they'll hang in there. Stellantis is also, I think, in the seven maybe million range. Um, I think they stay in. I think they hang in there. Uh, they've got some very good brands, and they're moving quickly in the BEV space. Toyota is a maybe. The strength of Toyota, of course, is their manufacturing capability. Nobody is better. And so maybe they'll get it early enough to be able to make the switch. I'm guessing that they have a lot of this technology already figured out. Um, and when they think the time is right, they'll start to spring it on us. But that's a big maybe. So the other four, I think, are likely. I think Toyota's a maybe. It's, it's getting uh, harder and harder for me to see how GM, Ford, Volkswagen, Honda, and others are even going to be a factor uh, in 2030, much less uh, 2020, uh, much less 2020, 2035. Sorry. So um, a lot can change um, in the next 10 years, but I think the fight will be mostly over by 2028. So uh, that's why I'm a little nervous about Toyota as well. We've got Trueflation uh, has been uh, up a little bit the last couple of days, sitting right now still at 1.87. So since the beginning of February, since February 1, in fact, it has been under 2%, continues to be under 2%, but there is a little bit of a trend upward. Um, I don't think there's anything to be worried about, but I'm going to be watching this one. Well, okay, I watch it every single day. <laughs> so, so, But I will be watching it every single day. All right, so here we go. What, where are we sitting here this morning with the stock market? We'll start, of course, with Tesla. It is up five, which is about as much as it's been up today, sitting at 204.35. So that 202 range last time, that was kind of where we bumped up against and couldn't get through. It is now past that strongly. It did have a little bit of a dip earlier this morning, but now has recovered all of it. So Sitting right now at five dollars and nineteen cents up, continuing up this morning. We got the Dow Jones down one hundred and eight. We got the Nasdaq down six. We got the S and P down three, uh, and then we've got the uh, Magnificent Seven is mixed. Uh, Nvidia down eleven. Microsoft down. Meta up a little bit. Amazon down. Google up a little bit. Apple down a little bit. So the Magnificent Seven not moving a lot, except for Nvidia down strongly. Let's see what's happening with Kathy Woods. The Kathy Woods are all up except for CRISPR um, and uh, all up, uh, not a lot, just barely up, okay? So Tesla, again, going completely different than the rest of the market with a strong up performance. We talked about that, of course, at the beginning. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at what's happening with the bonds. We got bonds sitting here at uh, down 0.4%. Uh, 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 on the this is on the ten year. Of course, I always start with the ten year down uh, four tenths of a basis point, so not moving very much. We've got the two year down one point seven basis points, so that is narrowing the inversion just a little bit. We have got the two month actually up, with the other shorts are unchanged this morning. The two month is up uh, seven tenths of a basis point, so not a lot of action this morning except in the the uh, the two the one year the two year the three year they're all moving a little bit there, there there's a little strength a little bit of a uh, 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 downward move in the yields upward in terms of the stock of the bond prices okay let's take a look at oil oil this morning is up a little bit sixty two cents seventy eight twenty all right seventy eight has been about the very top of the range. Uh, Brent is uh, not quite $5 higher, so that is continuing in that same environment. We've got natural gas up a point, a point, so a half a percent <laughs> at $1.668, $1.66, $1.66, thousandths. I don't know why they show it to the next decimal. Anyway, we have the dollar struggling for direction this morning, the yen rising this morning. Uh, so we have got uh, gold is uh, rebounding. It's up five bucks. So again, but stuck right in the middle of its range. Here's the big copper flat this morning. 
very flat this morning. And we've got, here we go, Bitcoin continuing its rally up another 2,500 points. Uh, it is 50, let's call it 57, close enough to 57 to be 57 this morning. So huge move recently in the Bitcoin. All right. Uh, so if we go back one more time and look at Tesla, it is now 424. So it is wavering at that uh, in that four to five dollar up range. Um, all right. So let's start with remember, we've got Brian White later this morning. You're going to want to see part two. We're going to be talking about the Chinese stocks. Believe me, you don't know all the Chinese players. Some of these Chinese players are huge companies selling millions and millions of vehicles a year. Have you ever heard of Cherry? Okay, Cherry's a very big player. They are the number one exporter from China. We'll be talking about all of the players in China. We'll be talking about, of course, Hyundai Kia. We'll be talking about VinFast. Uh, VinFast. Uh, so we'll be talking about all those companies and what where we see them right now in terms of their competitive positioning. Yesterday, we talked at length about all of the U.S. makers all the European makers and the Japanese makers. I mean, we talked about all of them in a half an hour. In 32 minutes, we covered the full range, talking about where they stand right now, where they're going, what we, how we see these playing out. And right now, it's hard to find any winners at all in the United States, Europe, or in uh, Japan, other than, of course, Tesla. All right, and then uh, later today, of course, I'll have, uh, I'll have Gibbs on, uh, the other Gibbs. Nicholas Gibbs, as he, he as he almost always is on Tuesday nights, Nicholas Gibbs will be helping me uh, bring in the good news on Tuesday. Uh, and uh, yeah, I think that's all I've got to say this morning. Uh, Tesla's down just a little. It's, now it's at four dollars, so it's been it's been doing this between four and five dollars. The the momentum clearly is up, but it's. Uh, there's a few folks that are grabbing some profits there every time it hits five bucks. We'll see what happens the rest of the day. Look forward to talking to you a couple of more times today. It's been great talking to you this morning.